Welcome back. This is the second part of the uh, statistical test uh, table uh, video. And uh, what we're going to do is to, uh, I want to give you a little bit of introductory information here, and then we'll get started back with the previously recorded material. Uh, I did back it up just a few minutes, so that uh, you, you, or a few seconds, excuse me, so that uh, you, know, you can get um, all of that information. But let me uh, just go through and explain just a couple of things right quick. Uh, I did add on this, uh, the mean and the median can be used to describe uh, interval data and ratio data. Actually, if it's normally distributed, then uh, the mean and the median and the mode will all be the same. Uh, if it's ordinal data, then sometimes you may want to use the mode in addition to the median or instead of <clears throat> variability right here. Um, compare one group to a hypothetical value. You actually, uh, we actually do that to some extent in uh, chapter seven. And then the unpaired t-test is chapter eight. The paired t-test is covered in both seven and eight. <clears throat> the one, uh, one-way analysis of variance is going to be in chapter 12. We aren't going to deal a whole lot with the repeated measures analysis of variance, the Pearson correlation. That's in chapter 10. Linear regression is in 10 with the correlation. And then we do a little bit of the discussion of multiple linear regression in 10. <clears throat> The uh, F-test, actually we cover that back in chapters uh, 5 and 6, I'll just put down 6, and then uh, the chi-square value you know, goes along with that there. <clears throat> These other tests, um, we've talked a little bit about the chi-square test, and a lot of these right here do use the chi-square test and the contingency coefficient there. Those are the subject of chapter 11. And um, so that pretty well, uh, these non-parametric tests right here, those are covered in chapter 13. I think I'm off a little bit somewhere. It may be that I've gotten these over here mixed up. Uh, this may be chapter eight, chapter nine. Uh, anyway, they're they're right in there together. So um, those are things that are covered, uh, you know, in the book. What we've done is uh, we've gone through and talked about designing experiments. We've talked about the type of data. We've talked about the type of, of, of samples and those kind of things. You take all of that stuff, you put it together. You look at this chart and that will help you to identify which particular test you should use in a particular situation. So let's go back to the video and, and see whatever else there is here. You don't really want to do a regression. You don't want to say this is what I predict the value is unless there's a significant relationship as verified by the Pearson correlation because otherwise whatever prediction you'd have wouldn't make much sense. But there are also alternatives where we can go through and, and predict uh, values from uh, several different measurements. And again, that would be done with a multiple linear regression, which we will touch on a little bit in this course, although we uh, won't do a whole lot uh, with that. But the, the, the main point that I think one of the main benefits of, of seeing this chart at this particular time is that you will go through, and this isn't uh, exhaustive in it by any means of the imagination, but a lot of times people get confused between a paired t-test, when you should use that, and when you should use the Pearson uh, correlation. Let's see if I can get both of those on here. Uh, because they, they would work on the same type of data. Uh, this is paired data. The data already has some sort of a relationship between it. But 
the difference is, and and how you apply it, is it do you want to find a difference between the two measurements, or do you want to describe the association between the two measurements? Uh, if you want to describe the association, then obviously you would use the Pearson correlation. If you just want to go through and say, this value is different from that one, then you would use the paired t-test. So, uh, again, from this chart, you can see that there is different, there are differences in uh, how many groups you're, you're analyzing. There are tests for one group, one group, two groups, three groups, more. Are the data values related? You know, there's paired tests, there's association, correlation type tests. Uh, or are they independent data? And then is, how is the data measured? And that has a whole lot to do with it because most of the ordinal measurements are going to be analyzed with a non-parametric test, which is in the middle column of the, of the chart. And the uh, parametric tests are going to be used on the uh, interval data. Uh, and so basically you, you end up with, if you understand how to use that chart, then it will help you to put uh, to, to classify everything in the proper way and you can identify which test you should be. So I hope this has been useful. Again, uh, if you have questions, let me know. Okay, uh, just a, a quick wrap up. I did, I did think about it a little bit during uh, while that other materials and I think that it is, uh, make that correction there, that it should be eight and nine and then the two paired measurements again are both covered in in eight and nine. I can't emphasize enough how useful this chart would be. Uh, mostly what it does is it helps you to go through and classify these tests because a lot of times as a beginning statistical student you you say well there's a t-test and there's a regression and how do I know the difference between those two um, and by looking at this chart, you can go through and you can see that, well, one of them is used in this situation and the other one's used in this situation. And hopefully that will be useful to you and, and, and will help. Uh, so, uh, as I've already said a couple of times, uh, if you have questions, and certainly you know, let me know. Uh, and again, hopefully it's been useful. And uh, so, uh, have a good day.